Good afternoon, family. Once again, it's your DC dude. If you are already a subscriber to this channel, then welcome back. However, if you are new to this channel, I recommend you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you can stay in the know about where we're going to go. So, family, we found ourselves down here at the Wharf in Southwest Washington, D.C. for Summer Series number four. Now, many of you don't need an introduction to the Wharf. Now, personally, it's been a go-to for me, family, and friends for many years. Come down here to get our crabs um, and all kind of fresh seafood right here, right? Now, although this area has changed a lot in terms of the entire Wharf, this west end of the wharf goes way back to 1805. Now, I talk a lot about DC history throughout my videos, and I've mentioned before that our government actually moved into what they called back then the federal city of 1800. So five years later, we had this. As a matter of fact, family, this is the oldest seafood, uh, outdoor seafood market in the country. So behind me, you have the Washington Channel. Now, back in 1805, when this, when this started uh, to become popular as, as the wharf, when it became the wharf, uh, there was no Washington Channel. Because remember, that's Haynes Point over there. And remember, we went to Haynes Point on our, on our video last week, and we learned that it was a man, it's man-made back in like the 1890s, right? So in, 18, in 1805, if there was no Haynes Point, then the, 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 that was all Potomac River. So in this area, you had Potomac River, you had access to the Anacostia River, you had what was called the Tiber Creek, the James Creek. There was also later on something in the 1830s called the Washington City uh, Canal, which is where Constitution Avenue is now, over by the monument, uh, like 17th Street. It goes along Constitution Avenue. Uh, so you had all these waterways down here. So Southwest was the first commercial district in D.C. because you had fishermen selling their catches to the local residents in this area. So D.C. dude, what's with the raincoat? <laughs> okay, so throughout this video, we're going to experience all kind of weather. There's going to be summer, there's going to be sunny weather, there's going to be cloudy weather, and it just stopped raining out here, so that's why I have my raincoat. But it seems kind of appropriate that I have my raincoat on today because we're at the wharf after all, and this is what fishermen wear, right? <laughs> I feel like a fisherman right now. <laughs> With my rain coat, with my rain gear on, right? I even got the pants. <laughs> but in any way, any case, although the weather can change like that drastically within one day in Washington, D.C., we filmed this over multiple days. This is actually the last day of filming. I'm doing the beginning at the end. Sometimes I do that, family. And sometimes it works better that way because as I shoot the video, I come back and, and do the beginning so I can give you a good introduction of what we're going to do because I've already done it, <laughs> right? So like I said, there are going to be multiple weather that we're going to experience here today. I'll tell you all my trade secrets. Also, you'll notice that it's not that many people down here. And it's early in the morning. It's just after 8 a.m., family, and it's on a Saturday morning. In fact, I was surprised to see people down here at all. But well, people come down here before it gets crowded. And I can, I can only imagine what it was like 4th of July. Uh, the last time I came down here on 4th of July, I think it was like the year before COVID, uh, like 2019, and it was a mess. Because parking is not like it used to be. Like I said, it used to be a service road. You could park, park your car along the service road. Now you have to park your car in a garage back there. Or you could park your car on the street over here. So in addition to coming down here, sitting down here and getting yourself some crabs uh, for this summer series, number four, things to do during the summertime in Washington, D.C., there are also a ton of things to do since the, re since the redevelopment of the area. Over the last six years, the wharf has taken on humongous changes. I mean, as, as, we'll, as you'll see along the video, because my history of the wharf, the Southwest area, was restaurants like Whole Gates, you might remember Whole Gates, flagship. My family didn't go to restaurants much growing up. Only time we really went to a sit-down restaurant was with somebody, some kind of celebration. Somebody graduated. Typically, all of our graduations, me and my sister's graduations, were celebrated after at the Whole Gates. Got those delicious rum buns. Remember those? That sticks out the most in terms of me with with uh, with uh, my memory of Whole Gates. And also, as we'll go along M Street, you'll see that that area has completely changed. There used to be a service road that would lead you down here so you can come get your crabs. Now it's very difficult to park anywhere around here. And people, you know, you have to pay for parking in the garages up here, down there, 
or try to find your a parking space along the street, which is Main Street right here, right along here. Right. Uh, anyway, so like I said, we're going to see a lot of the changes that have taken place on the walk over the last six years. There are two phases in the project. The first phase opened around 2016, and they're still working on phase two right now. Y'all ready? So family, this here ship coming up on the right side is called Providence. So it's a fully functional reproduction of the first ship authorized by the Continental Congress for the Continental Navy during the American Revolution. You can take a tour of the Providence and go back in time and learn what daily life was like for the men who sailed during the 18th century. During your tour, you can stand on the quarter deck and imagine yourself as captain and go below deck to experience the small spaces sailors call home while at sea. Also, you can learn about Providence's film debut in the movie Pirates of the Caribbean pretty cool. Also from the wharf, you can get a ticket to ride the water taxi. The water taxi a ticket includes a round trip, a 70 minute sightseeing tour, uh, looking at the monuments and memorials from the view of the Potomac River. Now this is the same water taxi that you can also purchase a ticket from National Harbor and begin and end at that same location. Here are just a few of the many restaurants at the wharf. This first one is Shake Shack, a New York-based restaurant that became popular in D.C. Cantina Bambina, which serves to-go items like quesadillas, bagels, and frozen custard, but also has an open bar upstairs with great views of the waterfront. Mibida, according to their website, has Mexican cuisine inspired by traditional Mexican home cooking presented in a modern, elevated way. Now this one got my attention because I never noticed it before. Apparently it just opened in February 2022. It's called Boardwalk and Arcade. It has a beachy boardwalk type of feel to it. The arcade apparently has both vintage and modern games, plus basketball, pinball, table football, ski ball. You know, the kind of thing that you would expect on a boardwalk. Did anybody know about this one? Apparently, I'm late. I actually learned about it last year when I did a bus trip to take people, uh, a, a singer group or some kind of band to this event there at the Anthem. So apparently, it's been there since October 12, 2017. It has 57,000 square feet of space with a movable stage and backdrop that allows up to 6,000 people. So it's operated by the same people that manage uh, DC's 930 Club, the Lincoln Theater, and Merlin's Merryweather Post Pavilion. Thought it was pretty cool. So here is another music venue that shares the Wolf's Bull Walk. It's called the Pearl Street Theater. It's described on its website as an intimate live music venue, diner, and bar. I've been noticing these type of water fountains all over the city. There's another one in Navy Yard where kids just kind of, it comes out of the ground. Kids can just walk up, jump around, and play in it. But this one also has an added feature where it does this steam thing. Pretty cool. Okay, family, I thought I would end our walking tour with Recreation Pier. So there are four different piers that extend off of the boardwalk. The other three are called Market Pier, Transit Pier, and District Pier. thought I would end here because it's, it's like a good place to take a breather. They have uh, cool chairs to sit in, benches and whatnot. Also, they have this swing that you can sit on by yourself or with up to like three people on the same seat. What do y'all think? I mean, if you haven't been down here, because it they developed this area in 2016, I think is when phase one opened. So phase one is most of the things we looked at so far. Phase two, they're still working on, I believe. But then again, th th there might be some finished buildings down there as well, because they've really been doing their thing down there. So now I'm just going to chill a little bit and just lay back and enjoy the ambiance. I'll use that word. I'm just going to enjoy the ambiance of the war in Southwest. Meanwhile, family, I got to get back to work. I'm doing a charter bus trip right now. I got to pick the people up by, uh, let me see, 12 o'clock. So uh, onward and upward. And meanwhile, family, you never know where we're going to end up next. So if you want to ride, just click on subscribe.